That is my favorite is testosterone for both men and women. That's one of the greatest predictors of how you're aging. Welcome back for our third part of our three-part series, the Rest Eat Move podcast. This is Matt Johnson for the third week in a row. Uh, We really have had fun with this three-part series. Um, It's kind of a fun format to have a discussion, but also give you a couple takeaways. This week three, we're going to talk about diagnostics, markers, measurements. Before I get into that, again, as always, ask us questions. We've heard from a lot of you. Info at OntarioLiving.com. This is our way to improve the dialogue, to answer questions that probably not only you have, but others have. Um, We're excited about the new features of our website, our app, our content, um, our activity on social media. So again, thank you for the support. Thank you for consuming. And uh, remember to share some of the stuff that you are getting value from. So week three. In our three-part series of Ask Chris or Dad, his top five, I came up with this word diagnostics. You hear this word. It's not my favorite word, but we're going to talk about the top five diagnostics, and it's going to move from diagnostics to just measurements or markers. But when you think about diagnostics, a diagnostic test is trying to uncover a disease, And we're so fascinated with disease. You know, when we work in corporate America, it's all about disease management. It's like nobody, nobody wants to talk about disease management, but that's what they care about because that's where the cost is. Or when you're thinking about, well, I need to make a change. Well, you only make a change usually when it comes to your health, when you're worried about a disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. But there's more to diagnostics in my opinion, and that's why we're going to use the word uh, markers or measurements. Um, but dad, welcome. There's so many diagnostics, markers, apps, tests, treatments, evaluations. What's going on? Well, I think that the big thing you're kind of uncovering right from the beginning is that we can test so many things now. And breath is going to be the future. So breath is going to be, there's going to be over 80 diagnostics from breath alone. That's coming. Breath, saliva, Saliva. blood, urine. So again, we've always thought of the gold standard is the the blood test. But there's so many. So we we could spend all day talking about this. We could do it for a long time. There's people that have much more uh, training and skill in this space. But I will get back to always what you just said. So if you did uncover that, what would you do? Why do we have to wait (laughs) till you get that to, again, we all, we're all, you know, aware of that. So really get into the mindset of thriving versus surviving. If I know that I have heart disease, I probably need to know, I need to move my body, eat better. The list goes on different markers, but why do we have to wait till we have a uh, an issue. So we want to, ch- we're the goal we have. And again, we're adding more and more frequently asked questions to our website. Um, and it's been driven by many of many of you out there. And that's what we want to continue to do. So if you have any questions, we're, we're listening and we're putting those down so people can look at those. But I think the whole mindset is that there is so much to uncover. But really, what we want to talk about today is the basics. If you can do the basics and be aware of that, then you can start, you know, measuring that. And we, we, and there's a lots of things to measure. Whether it's, uh, can you do a perfect push up? To can you hang on a bar for thirty that's seconds? A, that's not on a blood test. Can you do a perfect push up? I didn't answer that at the doctor, but it's important, or it could be. Well, you said years ago we did the pure stocking uh, climb. I did it twice. Okay. And if in how many vertical feet is that? Four fifty. 450 straight down Lake Michigan never seen before it's unbelievable and we got down to the bottom and you said one of the tests could be if you can go down and up this thing probably don't need to pay for health care right because if you can do it it just shows you a lot so there's so many things yeah out of the 98 percent of us that are able right so that's the challenge out there is is, is self awareness number one and that's where the diagnostics so t- come in let's talk real quick you know you got this um you know, if you're listening to podcasts like ours, there's sponsors, there's ads, there's promotion of fecal tests, of 
microbiome tests, allergies. Um, I've, I get regular blood tests. There's, there's apps that tell you what foods you should and shouldn't eat at certain times of day and intermittent fast. So there's all these diagnostics, you know, some of the most nutri- you know, invested nutritional science or products always come with the diagnostics of why, you know, precision nutrition, customized nutrition. What's, go- why, why is this? What, what are we, where's the marketing and where's the actual helping of people? What, what's the inner connection? Well, obviously there's a lot of money involved. And so people are always interested in measurables, wearables. It goes it's profitable. On on. Profitable, so profitable. You know, how many people really need to know their heart rate variability? I mean, but people, certain so, people do so want to So all these that. companies that are making all this money, has our health gotten better because of it? No, no. Has it gotten worse? Uh, yeah, I think our health is still going in a bad direction. We're not, we have to understand. That's why I wrote in the, my last book, your health begins in your mind. We got to get the mind right. Let's do the start and do the basics. If you can get people to do the basics, they're going to have a great outcome. Their gut's going to get better. So I mentioned this in our in one of our um, part of the first series of this this podcast that growing up I was tested for and this is a long time ago because I had all these digestive issues I was allergic to all these foods but I wasn't I just was a terrible eater <laughs> so as I ate better those diagnostics didn't really that didn't really mean a hill of beans so we have to understand there's nothing wrong with diagnostics but it it never ends the bottom line is what are you going to do. And let's start. Get, let's get back to the basics. Are there any of these future diagnostics that you are pro for? Oh, I think I think anything. You know, you know, I've talked about the wearables. Is that a good thing? For some people, it's more stressful, and other people, it's great awareness. But you just have to get back to having that awareness. Once you get the awareness, like people ask me all the time. Like I was doing a, a, a presentation recently in Orlando, and one of the questions in the audience is that. Do you count calories? No. Or do you have an app that counts calories? Do you have an app that counts calories? The answer is no. Am I aware that the calories, am I exact? No, but the body's constantly in flux. I mean, some days you'll need more calories than others, stress, whatever, how much sleep you get. But it's nice to have that awareness, but I don't want to get so, so caught up in the, the diagnostics that I'm not listening to my body. Sure. And that is now you're learning how to play the piano versus learning how to play a song. So yeah, there's a lot of noise out there. Again, I, I'm a believer in technology. I think we want to use technology. I, you know, I use some of these mail order saliva, blood, the breath is coming. Um, but I also think that we have to also get back to the basics, like you said, and it really begins in us, not outside of us. And so if we can be more introspective, versus relying on something to tell us what we probably could have found out without it. And again, we want the easy button. We want the efficient button. We want to know that the check engine light on. But at one point, cars didn't have check engine lights. And you can still understand if it's running well or not running well. Mm -hmm. But if you just rely on this check engine light because the engine's so efficient, you can't hear it anyway, or you don't want to pay attention to the music's loud, then uh, yeah, we need more of these. And that's what you're seeing. There's more noise, there's more chaos, we're in more of a hurry, we're more stressed, we're putting more toxicity in our body, and you're gonna see these diagnostics increase and increase. And I, and I think the diagnostics for a healthcare professional is gonna be really a good thing to sure. help, help you speed up the awareness, whatever. So again- It's for them though. It's for them, correct. Because they don't have the time. So there's some really good stuff, technology, from the diagnostics and how they're growing. You mentioned breath, but really it gets back to what are people doing? What are you willing to do? Are you really thinking about thriving? What's your intentionality? That all makes, that's a huge difference. We've both seen folks with beautiful diagnostics so far from thriving. And in many cases, we've seen some diagnostics with some reds and some flags and some highs and some lows that if you look at it, the whole scheme of things, they're thriving. And so we can get, I think we can get too focused on numbers and it's not so far from the truth of optimization. And, and it's, 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 it's a combination. Yeah. We have the eyeball test. I have clients come in <laughs> and there's the eyeball test. I mean, I can tell by the skin. I can tell by the way they move. I can tell. There's a lot you can tell. 
And so when you start digging into it, yeah, their cholesterol profile looks good. This looks good. They feel like their absence of disease, they're great. When the reality is they can't get off the floor, they can't touch their toes, they can't put their socks on, they can't, you know. They're not yeah, sleeping. They're not, their balance is terrible, they're worried about falling, but on paper it looks fantastic. So the eyeball test, there's a lot to that and people, people have to understand that nobody's gonna take care of their health better than them. Beautifully said. All right, so let's get into your top five diagnostics. And just uh, disclaimer, he's going to have more than five. I just know him. <laughs> so what are your five diagnostics or markers? It doesn't even have to be a diagnostic. All right, so I'm going to start with the Know Your Numbers. It's on our website. Get the hand so out. these are blood tests. It's a blood test. Okay. And the is a cholesterol profile. Okay. It's not being cholesterol. Again, we have a whole, we have whole, so much information on this, but... I want to know what the balanced cholesterol profile looks like. Lipid profile. The lipid profile, I want to see the cholesterol to HDL ratio and the triglyceride to HDL ratio. Those are those are what I'm looking at. And what is what is that telling you? It's telling my body is in balance. So cholesterol, you know, makes hormones, cholesterol makes cell membranes, cholesterol heals the body. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I just had a phone call. So this isn't really a diagnostic. This is a this is a marker. This is a thriving. Yeah, this is a marker. Of, talking it's, about it, it's thriving. not about it's high. You have heart disease. It's painting a picture. Painting of how a the picture. Body's function. When Holly was pregnant with, as they tested her cholesterol by accident, amazingly high. They don't do that with pregnant women because cholesterol makes life. At the end of life, our cholesterol will plummet. So cholesterol is a thriving marker. So I'm going to see that cholesterol profile in balance. So if my cholesterol is 240, my HDL is 80, I have a great ratio. Again, lots of information on that. But the first thing I'm looking at is a balanced cholesterol lipid profile. Okay. Number two. Number two is glucose. That's going to tell me how the cell is receptive to insulin and glucose. So again, if my if my glucose levels get a little bit crazy high, starts creeping closer to 100, I want to get my A1C. So glucose and A1C go together. What about insulin? Insulin is another marker, but again, we can go testing, testing, testing. If my glucose and my A1C are in great shape, probably my insulin's okay. So there's a lot of combination. So this is telling you how your cells function. It's how my cells, if my cells are soft and permeable, Insulin, when you eat food, insulin can go in and open up the cell. Glucose is entering the cell, feeding the cell. There's a lot of other diagnostics. You could test insulin by itself and how the body reacts. But again, we're into basics today. Let's do that. And then you can dive into the weeds more if you need to. Number three. That's a combination of homocysteine, which measures oxidation, and high-sensitive CRP, uh, which measures inflammation. Those are two tests that I think more and more people are now becoming more aware of, but probably haven't tested in the past. No medications for those. So those are no medications for that. That's how you eat. If a person has high stress levels, they're cutting out carbohydrates, they're going to see the homocysteine level rise, and that's a great indicator for heart disease. And then inflammation marker is the high sense of CRP, what my stress is like, what I'm sleeping, what am I eating, am I drinking too much alcohol? So those are two markers that have no medication um, uh, engagement at all. So again, those are lifestyle. Yeah, most people have never had those checked, but those are vitally important if you're diagnosed you know, diagnosing what. Yeah. And so back to where we're talking about frequently asked questions. So I was thinking about this last night. These are going to be a couple of questions. What is homocysteine? Why do we need it? That's going to be on our frequently asked questions. Same thing with high sensitive CRP. That's an inflammation marker. Back to thriving. If my homocysteine is under 10 and my high sensitive CRP is, you know, 0. 0.0 something, I'm starting to thrive. Number four. That is my favorite is testosterone for both men and women. That's one of the greatest predictors of how you're aging. In fact, I was doing a group the other day and I asked him, how many of you would like to know how you're aging? And nobody raised their hands. I'm like, okay. And then they all raised their hand. They were like, okay, yeah, I want to know how I'm aging. But testosterone gives you an indication if you're thriving. So as we're aging, again, touching 65, you're always told that as you age, your testosterone level will drop. Yes, it will. But the, the level of it dropping is directly related to your lifestyle. So if you're not sleeping, you're not getting enough rest, you're not doing some strength training or omega-3 fats, you will see a drop in testosterone. For women, we like to see it over 35, and men, we like to see it over 500. 
So free testosterone, you're just given some total testosterone. What's the difference? It's that's absorbable testosterone. Free. But I start with you start with the total. That's where you begin. And if someone's free testosterone is off, what does that mean? That could be a lots of different indicators. But again, we go back to let's just start with some of the basics. And again, we could spend a, a long time talking about testosterone. But free testosterone, it means it's how the body is actually using the testosterone. But so a big you, part of that, if people have good total testosterone, generally, the, generally like the insulin level we just talked about, you're going to see that, that free testosterone be in balance. And number five. Number five is your kidney function. Again, we could test BUN for your liver, but a kidney function, glomular filtration rate, GFR, it's on the blood test, know your numbers. There's a lot of crossover tests. That tells you how your kidneys are thriving. So a person's dehydrated, doing too much protein powders, energy drinks, alcohol, you'll see that number drop. And you need, as listeners, I want everybody to make sure you get that specific number. On your blood test, Many times it will just, it, they won't talk to you unless it drops under 60. But you want to know exactly that number. So you can look back on it. So when I look back at myself, and my, my GFR hovers between 85 and 78. If you're 25, you probably want to see a GFR of 110 plus. Dialysis clinics have never been popping up faster in our country. Got to back up and say, why are we having you know, kidney issues? So this is a really good thriving number. If you're dehydrated, you're doing too much protein powder. We've talked about this before, but that's a great number. All right. So number one was cholesterol profile. The whole port profile cholesterol is amazing. This is a marker. This is not diagnostics in in our opinion. Number two is glucose, A1C, potentially insulin. Just determining how your cells functioning. Three, homocysteine, CRP. Two amazing markers that uh, most people have never been exposed to testosterone, male and female, and number five, kidney functions, GFR. Knowing you, you have some other markers. What are your other markers outside of this? How do you know? Five? How do you know I'm going to have more markers? I've read your book of <laughs> 350 pages. All right. So one of the things we have at the bottom of Know Your Numbers, it's called the Big Three. It has nothing to do with blood test. In fact, I was doing this morning with one of my clients. But you can just get an inexpensive blood. Uh, blood pressure, heart rate monitor. You buy them anywhere. They're very inexpensive, under $50. But I'm a huge fan of resting heart rate. I remember way back in the day, one of my greatest indicators, if I was overtraining in bodybuilding, I would constantly monitor my resting heart rate. If I was overtraining, I would have my resting heart rate would go up. Resting heart rate is a great indicator of your stress level. It's a great indicator of your fitness level. And it doesn't cost a dime. So again, it's a great way that if I'm working on, you know, if I got too much stress in my life, whatever, you'll see your resting heart rate go up. And as your fitness level improves, you'll see your resting heart rate go down. Number two is, goes right with that, is your breath. How many breaths do you take per minute? We talk a lot about breathing. Dr. Phil Nuremberger, you know, trained us for many, many years. But breath is one of the greatest indicators of overall health. As we age, we have less ability to exhale. And that's why we like talking about the balloon. And so one of the diagnostics I like to use is blowing up a balloon. But how many breaths you take per minute is a big deal in being intentional. By what, what, just briefly, what happens if you don't know how to exhale or you're not exhaling? Well, you're not getting out the garbage. So a big part of exhalation is you're now getting out the bad the bad air, right? So the goal is you're trying to create, the body lives on oxygen. It's like eliminating. So you're eliminating. So we have no problem inhaling. We have a hard time exhaling. And that's why we're a big fan of a four second inhalation and a six to eight second exhalation using your diaphragm. And that's why blowing up a balloon is a great indicator of your ability, the strength of the diaphragm to exhale. And so I'll bring people in here and I'll talk about breathing and they're kind of rolling their eyes. They're not interested. And then I hear comes a diagnostic. Blow this balloon up. Blow this balloon up. Oh, uh, And then I show them <laughs> how I can blow it up. And they're like, how do you do that? I'm like, well, you know, you just ha use your diaphragm. So again, it's just an awareness. It's a measurable, but breathing is a big deal. And last one is blood pressure and they all three to go together. So if you have 
a resting heart rate, your breath, your blood pressure. If those three are in line, I probably don't need to see a whole lot of other diagnostics. So the big three, these, these are probably at the top of your list. You can do them daily. Um, but I think it, this whole message comes back to what are you going to do? So you could go get an executive physical. You can have the best specialist in the world tell you about your numbers and stats. And there's, there's some treatments and procedures and medications that can get those numbers in alignment. But when you look at these things, when you're evaluating yourself, it all comes back to what are you going to do differently? And until you determine that you will do something differently, want to do something differently, start doing something differently, I think these tests are going to be very minimally helpful. Well, one of the things, just to let everybody know, this coming fall, I will have a four-week class on this, on these diagnostics. And not only understanding them, but also how to improve them. And I remember, and this is kind of, what just want to throw this out there, but one of the major companies we worked with back in the day with Dr. Phil and Matthew Cross, we did Jeopardy. And we had these categories. And they were being kind of, they were just picking on me, but the answer they always say is daily movement. Or they would say cod liver oil. Because it all helps at all, right? So I had to laugh, like if, if you had a problem with your blood pressure, you would change how you breathe. If you had a problem with your cholesterol profile, you would take the cod liver oil. So it really kind of crosses over into everything. And so when people get back to these diagnostics, it really gets back to what you just said. What are we going to do about it? And it really gets back to doing the basics. So top five, we did a three-part series. I thought this was a, a good use of talking about it, giving some actions. But it all comes down to what are you going to do? Whether it's gut health, whether it's talking about energy, whether it's diagnostics, at the end of the day, you have to listen to your body. You have to have the self-awareness. Before you get diagnostic tests or get all these fancy things, um, you gotta understand these are just tools. But our best tool, our best way to optimize is us. The, these are your habits. Um, these are your activities. And so leaving this three-part series going uh, about your, your day Think back. What are one or two things that you're going to do differently because of the awareness that you created? Again, thanks for joining us on another podcast. We had fun over this three-part series. If you have any questions, always shoot us an email, info at ontargetliving.com. Again, this was Matt Johnson. We'll see you again next time.